Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley in Washington, D.C. Do keep up uh, with uh, the world situation on tarpley.net. New postings every week on tarpley.net. Above all, buy those books. Uh, you can't tell the players without a program. You can't understand what's happening without the theoretical background in surviving the cataclysm or the whole story in Obama, available now two and a half years uh, ago and um, counting Obama, the postmodern coup, the making of a Manchurian candidate, and Barack H. Obama, the uh, unauthorized biography. A lot of people now joining in on this Manchurian candidate stuff. The latest is uh, Dinesh D'Souza, reactionary uh, monger uh, in uh, Forbes magazine that he's a Manchurian. He's a Kenyan Manchurian. All right, fine. He's a Manchurian, and you had that here two and a half years ago. Uh, and more. Thanks uh, for coming to the party late, old Dinesh, reactionary from uh, Dartmouth, I think he is. So um, that's tarpley.net. The um, crisis now is something's happening now. It's September. It's going to turn into October. We've got this third quarter to fourth quarter uh, rollover point, many times the cruelest uh, time of year for these financial Markets Now, a couple of other things that are interesting, not just that gold is up, uh, Greenspan, uh, Bubbles Greenspan, Mr. Derivatives, the guy who brought you the derivatives bubble, and that's the cause of the depression, and get that straight, this is a world derivatives panic 2008, which has caused the world economic depression and continues to make it worse, because that money, those derivatives are still there. Greenspan says the high price of gold, the new highs, right, up, up, approaching $1,300 an ounce, uh, is the canary in the coal mine. It's something, uh, something's going wrong. Hmm. And what else do we find? The U.S. Treasury bonds had been doing extraordinarily well. The entire world has been piling into Treasury bonds in recent months. The two-year note, as we recall, hit an all-time historical high of price and low in interest rate about a month ago, but now in the 10 days before, let's say the first 10 days of September, in the first 10 days of September, the uh, price on the 10-year Treasury note has gone down by 2.5%, which in these bonds is a big, big deal. So this would indicate some kind of changing sentiment, again, possibly having to do with possible moves uh, by Helicopter Ben. And we know, right, he's Helicopter Ben. He doesn't like deflation. He'd rather court uh, hyperinflation. And that seems to be uh, the idea. Now, we know what to do. Zero percent federal credit, not for banksters, not for parasites, not for Wall Street speculators, but to take unemployed workers and empty factories, put them together, restart production. And above all, 1,000 hospitals fully equipped, 100 of the most modern nuclear reactors, rebuild the interstate highway system, rebuild the, um, the entire water systems, rebuild uh, rail, 50,000 miles of maglev and fast rail, rebuild commuter rail, rebuild passenger rail, rebuild freight rail. Uh, you'll get a recovery. And remember, the reactionary argument is only war can do that, which is a way of saying that depressions are ended not by government spending, but by government spending. Now, we want to change that. We want to make it government lending, not on the budget. This is capital. We want the Fed to cough up 0% credit for these long-term investments, 40 to 50-year federal credit at 0%. You'll get a recovery, and you'll come out of that with a capital stock more modern than anybody in the world, as we had in 1945, and permanent increases in the productivity of labor, real increases, not speed up, not uh, derivatives, not the rest of this uh, garbage. So um, the uh, other things going on economically, we're just looking at these uh, Basel III rules. Uh, these are very, very dubious now. This is a group of uh, bankers, finance oligarchs, uh, meeting here, and uh, they come up with these standards of how you try to prevent another panic crash and chain reaction bankruptcies of the banks, as we had them in 07, 08, 09, and continue to have them, actually. But uh, their, their version is you've got to have, if you're an international bank of some large size, you've got to have 7% 
of your assets held as capital. And the Wall Street Journal on Tuesday uh, says that this is an increase from 2% of your assets held as capital to 7%. And that seems to be a big deal. Unfortunately, this is, this is completely useless because with derivatives, your losses can be 20 to 1, 50 to 1, 100 to 1, 1,000 to 1. That's the genius of derivatives, these wonderful creative financial instruments, right? A CDO, a credit collateralized debt obligation, a credit default swap can uh, generate that kind of uh, loss. And if you don't believe me, ask, ask Bear Stearns. And when they blew in March of 2008, setting the stage for the events of two, two years ago this past week, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, the new Basel standards continue to allow the biggest banks to take risks but demand that they build bigger capital cushions to absorb their losses. And again, the problem is there's not enough capital under the moon. There's not enough capital in the solar system or the nearby galaxy to cushion you effectively against derivatives losses. This stuff would be fine if you wiped out all derivatives. If you banned all derivatives, this stuff might be halfway serious, but they don't. On the other hand, look at these banks that are below the uh, 7% line. Monte de Paschi di Siena. Allied Irish banks, Erste Bank of Germany, Piraeus Bank is just above it. In the U.S., the weakest one, Bank of America, and we've been watching Bank of America stock go down, down, down for the last six months or so since April. So if there's a candidate for trouble, it seems to be Bank of America, even on days when the, uh, when the stock market goes up. Bank of America not doing too well. Um, so... Let's uh, keep an eye on all that as the payment deadlines go. Here, Bank of America down one and one and a quarter percent today when the market is down basically nothing, basically flat. J.P. Morgan down two percent today. Huh? Interesting at this hour as we check the quotations. So this is the uh, the financial situation. The depression rolls on. One little bit of light in this entire gloomy depression picture from all people, the European Commission. Now, this is a case of, um, what can we say? They're making concessions to, uh, to avoid something serious. Uh, the European Union uh, Commission, right? This means Barroso, the Portuguese uh, neo-fascist, I guess we'd have to call him, has come out and said that... Uh, they want to propose that the European Parliament uh, set up limits on derivatives uh, and some short selling. And it's fine. It's, uh, it's all to the good, but it's really very, very meager. This was on uh, Wednesday. So here's what they want to do. If you want to have um, credit default swaps, you've got to trade them on exchanges. And short selling is banned unless you can prove that you've got access to the underlying security. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio.